Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Remask 4 from Topaz Labs. As um, many of you might know that Topaz Remask is a great tool for selecting subjects from one image and using them in another or changing the background. But if you've ever tried to use it for uh, subjects with wispiness, so wispy hair, dog fur, cat fur, whiskers, fringe, feathers, it's actually still a challenge to be able to extricate that subject from its background because the program has a little bit of trouble trying to define the foreground and background part of the image. Well, recently Darcy Wheeler from Topaz Labs put out a blog on some tips and tricks that makes this actually easier and it's a great uh, set of information. I mean, I really, I tried it, I was like, wow, this is really cool and I decided I wanted to make um, a video to show this in action. Instead of a static blog, I wanted to show you what it looked like with the program actually doing the work. So that's what this video is going to be about. It really isn't going to be about processing the image or the final image, but just the kind of tips and tricks part of it so that you can try to do these with some of your own images. So let's get started. We're going to remove this lady who's walking down the street in DC from this very cluttered background and we're going to move her to a different place. So we're going to start off by choosing from filter Topaz Labs, Remask 4. All right, so if you're not familiar with Remask, the program um, uses colors to d delineate what's going to be kept and not kept in a particular image. And the program opens up with a green, uh, everything's kind of tinted green. Green for Remask is what's being kept. Red is what's being uh, removed and blue is the delineation between the two. So it tells the program that at this line is where you're going to want to see or start to calculate what's kept and not kept. Well. Normally what you would do with Remask is use your blue brush, the one you see here, and you would go around the image uh, outline for the areas that you want to keep. And you would just draw a line around that and then you would have the program do the work and try to figure out what uh, to keep and not keep. In this case, for these, this particular process for the wispy uh, edges, we're going to actually do something a little bit different. Instead of drawing this line, we're actually going to fill the background. So you'll see over here it says fills and the, I've now chosen blue. Uh, it has the white edging boxed around it. I'm going to go ahead and fill the entire image with blue. So that's the first step that you're going to want to do. Then you're going to want to draw some broad strokes with green to tell the program what part of the image you're going to want to keep. Now this is not an outline, so you don't have to be perfect. You just want to kind of come through and give it some edges, some high level decisions about what's being kept. And I kind of like to be creative for this is the area of my image that I want to keep. Now we're going to take the red brush and we're going to basically do the same thing, which is draw some lines around our lady on the street and tell the program what areas we actually want to get rid of. So that's it. No drawing, no outlining, no edging. Just some big broad strokes. We're going to hit compute mask. So the program goes through its process and determines this is what we're going to keep. And it does actually a pretty good job. You can definitely tell there's an outline of a woman with wispy hair here. So the first thing we're going to do is on color over here on the left hand margin, we're going to drag up the recovery slider. This helps the program figure out what's background and what's foreground. So you can see it's done a little bit better job of cleaning this up. Now with our red brush chosen, we're going to go ahead and work around the image and um, further define what is not being kept. I like to personally start on the mask image. I think it kind of shows me better what I want and what I don't want. And you'll see that what I'm doing here is not drawing brush strokes. I'm actually just tapping at the image and you'll see that the mask starts to sort of push down Just doing a few taps here and there. All right. So that's a pretty good start to define. And you can still see that there's this great wispiness to her hair. So now for the keep part, I'm actually, it's a little bit easier to actually do that when I'm looking at it. And for you can see here, before I go to the green brush, you can see that there's this little bit of red here in her hair. So I'm gonna make my uh, brush really small. I can increase the size of the image. And I just wanna tap on this area a little bit. And you can see that there's some gray behind her over her, uh, her left shoulder, our right image. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean that up just a little bit. 
Again, these are just little taps. Okay, perfect. Look around here. I mean, right about here. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our green brush. We're going to do the same thing, only this time we're telling the program what areas we want to keep. So again, just tapping along the edge. And you'll see that there's these little, you can see kind of transparency boxes. You want to fill in the best you can because you don't want her hair to be transparent. So. I'm kind of bouncing around left to right. I'm going to hold down the space bar. We get a little grabby hand so we can drag our image up. Fill in around her sweater here. A little bit on the bag. And then on her left arm, our right side of image. Here, because I'm trying to cover more area, it's a little bit easier to do a, a, a swipe as opposed to just a tap. A little bit more cleanup here on the bag. All right, let's take a quick look around our edges and see if there's anything else that we want to let the program know about. Make sure it's got all of her skin. All right. I think this looks pretty good. And from here, we're going to go ahead and just hit OK. And you'll see that we've now got a mask around her. Now, the way to, and you see that on the right in the layers panel, that I've got two images, a background and a background copy, and that uh, Topaz Remask has created a mask. So let's open up our future background. So this is the image I want to use for my future background for her. You can see that there's already sort of a, um, a problem in terms of the perspective, because I've only got half of a woman, right? I've got her upper torso, and I can't use a background that goes all the way to the ground, because then it's going to make it like where's her legs that's the question but i still think that this is the right background and usable so what we're going to do is pull it away from its embedded tab so i now have a uh, i can see her and the background together and i'm going to grab the background layer and i'm just going to drag and drop it into the image with the lady and as you can see like right away it's covering that's okay because it's the top layer we're going to fix that in just a minute but first and foremost, we're going to free transform this so we can give it a similar perspective um, to the picture of the woman. So to do that, we're going to use free transform, which is edit and free transform. Or you can do command T on a Mac and command uh, control T on a PC. So now that we've selected that, we're going to pull this down and spread it out a bit just to get it so it's the upper portion of the wall. All right, now the next step that I've hit enter so that you can see the bounding bars are gone um, and it's embedded the change. And now I'm gonna go ahead and choose the background copy with the lady and I'm gonna just drag it to the top. And you can see right away that Remask has done a great job because you can see that there is graffiti in and around these wisps in our hair. And that's exactly what we were going for. So spot on, this is a great technique to get this kind of image embedded in a different layer. And that could be a composite with lots of different images. It can be something simple like this, which is just changing the background to get her off of a hectic background. Topaz Remask 4 did a great job. So I hope that this technique shows you just how the possibilities open up for images like this. Particularly uh, for me, I find it's going to be great for straight photography where I can't really control the background of my um, of the person that I'm capturing in a candid image. So at this point, you could either flatten your image, you could merge visible, but you're ready to start processing the final image now that you've got her embedded properly in the background. So I hope this has been useful. I think this is a great technique. I want to thank Darcy for putting it out there so that we could all learn it. And thanks again for watching. Take care.